Hey there, Niyama Shang here, and thank you so much for letting me be a part of your journey. Well, today you have a bunch of us coming together on behalf of you outliers in order to help you continue to take your personal brands and turn them to personal and beyond in terms of your leadership and impact. Um, today, we have five incredible outliers. You're here to share their journeys, their experiences, and help us continue to expand our thinking and challenge the way that we go as we level up. Uh, why don't I let you get a chance to get to know each and every one of them. Uh, we'll start off here with Daniel. Daniel, would you mind just letting us know more about you and the game that you're playing right now? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, my name's Daniel. Um, the two, yeah, and I, I'm a teacher and I'm a podcaster and still kind of relatively new to the podcast game. Um, but I've been consuming podcasts voraciously personally for a long time and I've really been passionate about that medium. Um, and I've just been on a journey of, I guess I'll just use the word alignment. Niyama, I've, I've heard you use that word quite a bit in your content of alignment. And for me, um, I've just been really passionate about family and education. And personally, as a Christian, um, how do the, all of those things align? And I understand that that's not necessarily everyone's persuasion, not everyone's belief system. But for me, um, finding alignment in my core beliefs and then how that plays out in being a husband, being a dad, being a teacher, how do, how do all these things come together so that I can live a more meaningful, more impactful life? And so as I've been on that journey, trying to figure that out for myself, um, I think part of learning is discussing and thinking out loud. And so the podcast is just an opportunity for me to have those discussions with guests, with my wife, um, just talking about life, talking about family, talking about raising our kids and, 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 and bringing up the next generation and how all that fits into to those core beliefs that I have. So that's a journey that I've been on for the past couple of years. And, and the podcast is just one manifestation of that journey. And uh, yeah, that's just a little bit about me. Well, thanks for being here, Daniel. Uh, you're like, let's, let's get to let outliers get to know you. Hello, my name is Jure. I come from Slovenia, but I live in Dominican Republic, and I've been working on my podcast, Being the Genuine Athlete, five years, on and off. Uh, I've been a coach since 2009, as I can remember, and before I was a professional table tennis player, I've uh, finished uh, a physical education degree. I worked in school a bit, but I found my calling and purpose in elevating the consciousness and understanding um, of life, hacking life in a way, because we all have pain, we all suffer in life, we all have issues and problems. And in the past three years, I've dedicated myself completely to a specific method, AEQ method, which basically stands for balance, harmony, alignment in the body-mind connection. And it's um, alleviating and releasing uh, relieving people from chronic issues. Chronic issues happen because we are chronically, subconsciously in contraction. Even when we sleep, when we walk, when we eat, we are tight, uptight because of some trauma, some reason, some something uh, since childhood already. And uh, if you cannot get out of it, you're stuck. And chronic contraction creates uh, heat because when you are contracted it's heat that's the side effect and heat creates as a side effect inflammation and there you can go to any different diagnose any different consequence in the health or emotionally because emotions are produced in the body so once you do begin to control your subconsciousness your contractions you begin to control movements actions behavior everything goes down what is what was before chronic issue thanks well i'm, I'm glad you're here i'm excited to explore this and and beyond i like I like getting underneath the, the surface on things um let's go to gyra next gyra why don't you get, introduce yourself here let us know about the game you're playing right now hi thank you again for having me my name is gyra b i am a publicist by day but i'm also building a consulting and coaching firm I'm a strength coach. I love everything about strength. And that's what my podcast relates to is helping us understand our innate strengths and how they apply to our leadership styles in the workplace, in our homes and in our lives. I'm also an army veteran. So 
I'm kind of on that alignment path, like Daniel mentioned earlier, with knowing who I am outside of the uniform and getting to know me um, and my spirituality. And that's the game I'm playing, the game of aligning with who I'm supposed to be and also sharing my expertise in strength, development, and leadership. Well, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much, Tyrell. Um, like it's it's good to be here. Good to have you here. Uh, let's go to Lindsay, and then we'll go to Joe. Hi, I'm Lindsay Lee. Thank you for having me. I'm currently a student full time, so I'm pursuing my education currently um, while exploring business. So I have my own podcast called Lindsay Lee's Voice Memos, and it's a self help motivational podcast um, for anyone, especially students. Um, and I also have a nonprofit organization called Beyond Partners, working to expand more opportunities for um, children and adults with special needs. <clears throat> I think I love self-growth and motivating the young generation um, to take initiative and leadership. I love connecting with others, inspiring others, um, and helping others find their passions, motivations, and their confidence. So that's what, what I'm about. Well, I'm glad that you're here. Thank you so much, Lindsay, for, for being here. And Joe. Well, oh, hi, I'm uh, I'm Joe Baines, and uh, I'm I'm actually an ex cloud engineer. So I used to work uh, in the city of London, Switzerland, Germany, all these kind of places. Uh, but I used to work seven days a week, fourteen, fifteen hour days, and I basically just burnt myself out because uh, my diet was bad, my sleep was bad, everything was bad, and. Uh, Basically, I ended up with diabetes, neuropathy, and all the other good stuff. Uh, and it, they, they just didn't know how to cure me because I had nerve damage as well in the hospitals. So eventually, after about transferring me about four or five times to a different hospital, they eventually just gave up and said, look, this is how you are. And up to that point, I thought they were the experts. And then here I am now, I'm back at home. I'm disabled, you know, and like need somebody to look after me. My, my dead brother looks after me during the day. My sister looks after me during the night. I'm like, I can't be like this. I, I need I need to be out there. Uh, so then I just started studying health. I started studying nutrition. Um, I'm a biohacker, basically. And I learned that the food pyramid is completely wrong. Um, it's, you know, it's turned on its head. Um, so I'm, I'm keto now, uh, heading towards carnival. Uh, basically got rid of my diabetes, got my own nerve, nerve damage, all that kind of stuff. All just disappeared once I changed my diet. I do intermittent fasting, um, keto, carnivore, um, you know, breath work, like Wim Hof. So I do ice baths and things like that. Um, and I do yoga and all this kind of stuff. So I've left the uh, corporate world and now I'm trying to find my path through this. Um, I also do stand-up comedy, so I'm a stand-up comedian. And the Biohacking um, Life Hacks podcast was actually where I interviewed a lot of comedians because that's all I knew. Um, yeah, so I'm at the moment. So I've 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 been, I've been doing some consulting and I've done some workshops in health, uh, but I haven't been able to get that kind of traction. Um, so at the moment I'm studying sales, um, you know uh, how to do sales properly. So that that's my background. Thank you. Uh no, thank you. Thank you very much. Like, I, I really wanted to say outliers, like one of, the, one of the beautiful things about these kinds of podcasts is that we get people from all over the world and all, all like walks of life uh, here. And uh, like, to me, this is what being an outlier is like. It's like, like, it's not, it's like in any one given place, we are, we are something different. But collectively, we're all just different and different in similar ways, you know. Uh, and so we're gonna play here today in the conversation. We're gonna take things out here. Uh, I heard the word alignment show up twice in the conversation, and for me, it takes two dots to make a straight line. And so that's where we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Uh, where I want to start with with the alignment component is. Uh, I wanted to go down the values part first and and, and be there with, but that felt a little bit too easy for this particular uh, roundtable here. I want to talk about the the places where you might have felt yourself out of alignment in the work that you've done in the past. Uh, and my, whenever I ask to say in the past, uh, I generally mean in the recent past. Um, that because I like it's just real, right? Um, but can you can you share about a time where in the recent past you found yourself out of alignment? Um, with either the work you're doing or so, somewhere in your work there um, or with yourself, right? And the steps that you took to to get back into alignment, right? Let's start off with that. 
to anyone that, that feels called. Normally, I would call on it. But in a question like this, I like to give people a chance to like volunteer themselves into, into the answer. Uh, is anyone that, that feels called to respond to that? Okay. Uh, yeah, please. Well, Jaira, you, Jaira, you go. You go. You go. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I can uh, relate to that. I know for me recently, being a recent graduate, being an Army veteran, although I've been out of the military about four years, I had to understand at a deeper level more about myself. I'm walking into a new career path. I'm trying to create a company. I'm focusing on an expert, like being an expert in strengths and uh, studying all of these different things, but I wasn't learning myself and knowing who I was and the things that I needed to know about Jaira and what Jaira does and how Jaira likes this and likes that. And over time, I know that I was operating in a space that wasn't for me to operate in, but I didn't know that in the beginning. So I can agree to the whole being in alignment because when you're operating in a space of chaos and you're used to operating on the structure, it doesn't line up. <laughs> it affects your work ethic. It affects just your mental health overall when you don't know the things you need to know about yourself and how you're operating in certain spaces. So for me, the things that I did was I understood that about myself for one. For two, I had to figure out how to get myself under control. And that was me focusing more on my spiritual health, me getting back physically fit and getting uncomfortable in new spaces because I felt like that was a part of the thing too. It was unfamiliar to me. So I had to start being comfortable with being uncomfortable in those unfamiliar spaces and just knowing what was for me and discerning what was. So that's a little what I did. Yeah, I like this element of like knowing what was for you, right? And being able to like, say yes to that to be able to be in alignment with it rather than like because it's sometimes hard right like uh joe you just talked about taking i think you just mentioned talk about like taking ice baths correct you know i'm like i'm like i'm pretty sure ice baths are not for me right but sometimes we want to go and challenge ourselves to go do to go work like work in an environment and see like what can i go and learn from that space there but i'm also hearing from you like there's sometimes where it's just like it's just not in alignment and if it's out like getting putting yourself into a place where you can you can drive a lot more. You're like what you you were coming in here. I want to hear your 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 take on it. Um, I was a big people pleaser because mm. I was taking care of my mom's emotions, parents' emotions, um, my teammates in the in the team of table tennis and school and everything. Uh, just adjusting everyone. So that was I was perfecting the people pleasing game. Until I got a huge uh, excruciating pain because my cartilage in the right hip has worn down. And that happens. It's like an abuse that we do to our bodies because we overwhelm and overuse something, some part of the body, whether it's a joint organ muscle, because we are not connected. We are not aligned to that body part. The system is not working, the nervous system. So you just do. And this especially happens to people that live out of the head and not out of the body. When we all know that our life is 95% subconsciousness and subconsciousness resides in our muscles, fascia, the body, the nervous system, not in the brain. Brain just interprets. And we also know that 90% of energy, our body demands, brain 10. So how can we only rely on the 5% consciousness 10% of energy, and we think that we can create stuff out of the head. So I was completely disaligned, inefficient. I learned a lot because I said yes to every shit, excuse me for the language, and I helped every person. I learned a lot, but like already Joe mentioned, you get to a burnout, you get to depression, to anxiety, because the body always wins the war. The battles can be won by the head, but the body pays the price. And I learned it quite recently how to realign, well, in the past three, four years and, and become a more connected, um, aligned, authentic, joyful person. Not because I think so, because I uh, think that somebody expects or wants me to be so, but because I feel it in my body. I'm embodying this behavior, this feeling and functioning from the body, not from the head or the union, actually. So in that kind of sense, I've managed to to outcome a lot of things that are now standing up for yourself, you know, being relaxed, not being in fear, being there, ready. Well, I'm glad you brought this in. You brought in a lot here. And I, I and not like I'm gonna call you into listening to this part just again, because uh 
they say you t you tend to bring in people who who are like you, and I know that I'm a recovering people pleaser. So, um, so there's a chance out there, outliers, that y'all might be feeling this as well. And it's cool to hear of how like the the stand that you took for yourself and for others in in, in this process. What would you say was like the let's say inflection point? What what got you to say like, all right, enough is enough in one way, and now it's time for me to make make my shift. Uh, pain because yeah. the signal was not getting from the body to my brain i was rejecting i was suppressing signals i had pain in my hip when i was a teenager or before mm -hmm. even but i was rejecting these signals messages because you don't know how to interpret them how to understand them and you know what you don't know where they come from and of course everyone around you in the environment is adjusted that you're a people pleaser that you're a victim or that you're a rescuer that you always resolve stuff um, the issue is that what got me is this strong, excruciating pain that I said, now I need to do something. And I still wasn't ready to say no to people. But then sort of, I couldn't because I was lying in the bed, in the sofa. On the sofa, I couldn't move. I needed yeah. to say no. So that's how I slowly began to turn around the tables. And then everybody got crazy because they were adjusted. The Tura will resolve stuff. The Tura will say yes. I said no. So slowly, it was like, I couldn't have done it from a wisdom. I done it from a hard point and that was not good. But here we are. I'm I'm cured. Uh, I didn't have an operation. I don't have pain anymore. Not chronic. If it's acute because I walk a lot, then maybe, but chronic not. I'm not depressed. I'm not anxiety driven and I'm relaxed. And that's the biggest point on understanding that it's not your role to take care of other people's emotions not in the childhood, not in the adulthood. You cannot take care of everyone else and everybody will not feel good about you. So you need to take care of yourself, even if it sounds egoistically, it's not. Because I was not an egoistic person and I ended up almost on a wheelchair. So if that's not enough, I got the message like that, cruelly, on the level of physical. Yeah. Thank you for that. Like, Joe, I want I want to see because, like, you know, talk. I feel like you have a lot to, to share potentially on on the alignment front as well. Uh, what what comes up to you when it when it comes to alignment with you and, and the time where you're like and and the misalignment in particular. Um, excuse me, oh. I don't understand. Oh no! This, so now I'm gonna go to Joe. Uh, oh, Joe, okay, Joe. Uh, yep. Yep, Joe, here's from you. Like, I feel like you have a lot that you, you can contribute when it comes to like alignment, misalignment as well. Uh, what, what comes up for you when, in, in this part of the conversation? Uh, for, for me, I was just thinking about that. Um, I've, I've been out of alignment for most of my life. Um, and I literally went from what, like I was, I was married completely out of alignment. Uh, the one thing for me was, uh, I think we all have this, is intuition. And for most of my, my life, I just ignored my intuition and it caused me massive amounts of pain. And so now whenever I get any kind of intuition uh, to do something, I, I jump, you know, I'm like, I'll do it. I'll do it. Just don't give me the pain, you know? So um, what the first one was my marriage, uh, my job also. Um, and, and, and then I went into pickup as well for a, like a year or two you know, because of the divorce. And uh, then eventually I found Tantra. So I'm now, uh, you know, I do Tantra yoga. Uh, I do, you know, biohacking, all of that. All of that now feels like that's where I'm supposed to be. That's that's my home. Um, so I do like two, three hours of yoga every day. Um, I'm To be honest, I, I'm also a, a confidence coach. So I don't have any problems in, in being outside in terms of, so, for example, on the tube and the train where I'm when I'm going to work, I'm doing yoga on it. I'm doing chin ups on there. Do you know, like, and there's people standing around me doing their thing. I like, I, I just completely ignore it because it's more important more for me to do my thing than to be worried about what other people think. Do you know, so um, uh, yeah, I, I think that does that answer the question. Yeah, I, like it, it does. It, I'm going to come to you in just in just a, a bit here. Uh, I think there's something about that alignment that like that really throw, that really like shows up there where you know people talk about being unapologetic but, like and there's something that feels like it transcends unapologetic for you right now. It's like you're like I'm doing my pull-ups, right? But it's but it but it almost doesn't feel like I'm like I don't need to apologize to you. It's like I'm not even thinking about you. Like I like this is like I'm 
solid in my alignment of like, this is what my body needs. This is what my, like, this is what works for me. Uh, other people might see it as being unapologetic, but it's, that's not actually, it doesn't actually seem like that's the frame that you're coming from. It just feels like it's just like, this is what, this is what I do. Yeah. I mean, this, this is what I'm, I'm on the tube. Um, I've got, there's people around, I've got to do my stuff. I just do it. Uh, whatever, whether I'm doing yoga on the tube or, or chin ups or whatever, you know, like I just do it. Um, I, I didn't, I, I, I don't know. I should have I did an exercise a couple of years ago. I, I used to be a massive introvert and I did this exercise uh, for six months where I would go out every single day and talk to a hundred people to 200 people every single day. And I did that for six months. It's probably the hardest thing I've ever done. I would literally go on the tube and talk to every single person. Like, and like the responses weren't good, Do you know, like, but and this is London as well. So, and I did it every single day like the the pain my body went through of uh the anxiety the stress of just leaving the house was just off, off the charts you know so um but it felt like this is what i needed to do i needed to go down this route and it, and it completely changed me you know like mm -hmm. it just rewired my entire brain uh, like when you when you talk to and i i started running workshops on this so i used to run conference workshops uh, where we would teach people how to do this uh, and it would it just completely rewires your brain if you go out and quickly say hello to like 50 strangers but really quickly you'll, you'll see you'll have an awesome day the rest of the day because what it does it shuts down your anxiety it shuts down the voice in your head that says oh no no don't do that it just all disappears and you feel really free you know mm -hmm. so and i used to teach that as a as like a, a skill Oh, I, love, I love this year, like the component, like, thank you for bringing that in, like that component of freedom and also hearing what I'm hearing from you also just like leading into the intuition, even like, and you, like I, I get like, you're able to make yourself do some things like, like, but, and <laughs> make it come to life. Lindsay, you, you, uh, it looked like you wanted to say something earlier, like, like what, what was coming to mind? Yeah. Um, I was wanting to say to Joe, like, I love a really good turnover story. So thank you for sharing that with, with us and like saying hello to 50 people the tip um i'll try that out tomorrow but um real quick real quick you just said it right here yeah. on the outliers Ed podcast do you really mean you're going to try it out tomorrow Big yeah, yeah <laughs> oh, okay sure. like, uh, i think everyone it. listening right now should that's it i love it i love it yeah. i love it but yeah and i think our challenges are what makes us stronger so this mm. is a question that i have for joe and the others um, that I would also like to know personally, if you're looking to redirect, say that someone listening right now is looking to um, take a new direction in their life and um, realign with themselves and what they're looking for, what do you think the first step is? Like the horizon is so broad, like how should I start? Writing, slowing down, uh, listening to yourself, feeling what comes from your body, sitting on the question not literally you don't write it on a piece of paper and sit on it but in a <laughs> any other way um walking uh you know nature connection those kind of things and not rushing the problem is that we don't hear the the messages because we rush we expect the answer to come right away we go to the church we pray now the miracle has to happen these things need need time we were born we were like you know our parents needed to live and then to feel it and then to marry or whatever however we were conceived and then they had the intercourse and then we needed additional nine months but we take now this instant world so slowing down feeling breathing through your nose diaphragm nature writing waiting for the answer to come and it will come sooner not later. Yeah, I, I totally agree with everything you said there. Um, I, I do Tantra, and in Tantra, we, we study uh, the connection between, between us and God. And uh, intuition is basically God talking to you. Um, and, the own, and in Tantra, what we learn is that God is always talking to you, you know, like constantly. He's always, always in your, but he's whispering. And we have, our brains are so... Um, agitated and there's so much noise that we make that we can't hear it and so what you do is you you either meditate or like you say go for a walk in the woods um just to calm yourself down just to bring yourself down and then you can hear 
and just follow your intuition. That's all it is. Like whatever direct and your intuition, that that like the only thing that won't lie to you in the entire universe is your own intuition. So you just just follow that. You know, it'll it'll take you where you need to go, exactly where you need to get. Nice, nice. Thanks for bringing that in, Lindsay. Thanks for bringing that in. Uh, I'm going to stay a little bit on intuition right now. And uh, Daniel, I'm going to come to you. And then, and Jared, I'm going to come to you afterwards. Uh, I'm curious about how y'all play with intuition. Because I've heard I've heard it here uh, from Yura and, and Joe a bit. I'm, I'm curious about how y'all play with, with intuition. What does intuition look like? And uh, what does it look like when, when, you, when you don't like actually lean into it? Yeah, I think for me, when I'm, when I'm thinking about intuition is I just... Um, I don't know, kind of like Yoda said a little bit ago, like I can't be a people pleaser. And so when it comes to what topics I want to talk about on my podcast or uh, maybe something I want to dig into personally, uh, read a book, I've been really trying to work on reading. Um, and I, I, I'm not necessarily, I guess I'm not really a people pleaser, but I'm a rule follower. And maybe I'll see something online or I, I've heard something in my past of like, well, if you want to read, you need to do this or you need to do this or, you know, I'll just kind of have these rules in my head. And I've, I've learned that, well, someone else's rules aren't always the most helpful thing for me um, or something that works for someone else. Um, maybe maybe this type of podcast episode or maybe this type of topic is interesting. But if it's not something that's really working for me or really exciting for me. Um, then I just, I, I lose momentum. I, I quit early. I don't follow through. Um, but when it's, when it's something that I'm really excited about, something that really brings value to me, I just have to run with that because if I just follow everyone else's rules, um, it never works out. And so the best thing I have is, is going with the intuition that I have of, of what gets me excited. What am I interested in learning about? What am I interested in talking about? What am I interested in, um, and in, in moving forward in. And if I follow that aspect or that thread, um, I've, I've found that I've had more success going along those lines than, than whatever rules or, or kind of um, just ideas that have kind of been given to me by other people. So yeah, that's what comes to mind there. Yeah. You're, you're like, you're speaking to my heart right now. Uh, Cause it's, it's, uh, it's funny. Cause I, I consider myself to be an independent thinker and at the same time, also a, the recovering people pleaser. Uh, and, you know, so the, this component of finding like, if it's not going to work for me, it's just not like the work involved. It's just not, not the right way to go about it. I'm like, th thanks for putting that in. Uh, Jaira, let's, let's go to you. And then Lindsay, I have another question for you afterwards. Yes, me and Daniel have so many similarities. That's why I'm just sitting here <laughs> like, he's in my head. <laughs> um, I tie my intuition to my obedience. I have learned that what I'm to trust my feelings and to trust what I feel, to know what I'm feeling in that moment. I have, I'm at a place now where when I start feeling away, I kind of catch myself and I think I ask myself, why am I starting to feel this way? Like I need to know right in that moment because that helps me understand what my triggers are. Um, so I've just started tying intuition to uh, being obedient because one end that looks like me, like how Daniel said, you owning your value and your topics and what you want to talk, talk about and what is bringing substance to the audience you want to reach or the people you want to reach. And I have to go with my own mind and trust my own mind with that. And outside of that, what it looks like is when you do it because you see other people, oh, this is popular. Oh, or maybe I should talk about this. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't sit right. It doesn't reach who it needs to reach. And then now you're finding yourself like, I don't even want to do it anymore. I'll just take a step back and then reevaluate some stuff when really I'm fixing something that wasn't broken. or I'm impressed by things that I shouldn't have even paid any attention to. So definitely tie my intuition to just being obedient. Is that what it looks like for me? Yeah, that's fantastic. Like I, I'm starting to realize, at least for me, like there's so much more work involved in anything that you want to get done than you might think. Uh, and I'm starting to really understand the value. And this is from, for me, having, I've had outliers edge for years now and been talking about like leaning into your strengths, being authentic, so on and so forth. Um, but this finding like the 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 cost of doing things that that don't feel aligned, the cost of doing things that are like that that just aren't you, is actually quite high because everything works. 
Like, like if I want to get clients, I could get clients from smoke signals. Like I know someone who made a message in a bottle, threw it in the ocean and got a client from that three years later. I wouldn't recommend it as a marketing strategy, you know, but like everything works. Uh, and so like when I, when I hear this part of the conversation, it takes me to like, how much are we willing to like work it given that everything does work, you know? So Lindsay, that, that comes to, to that brings me to you. Firstly, do you, is there anything that you want to speak to on either alignment or intuition uh, overall? First, let me let me check it in, and then I have if not, I have a question for you. Um, I, I would just say like sometimes my heart and my brain go in different directions, and I'm like, oh, what direction should I step into? And in moments like that, I just trust um the universe, God, and time, and I trust that everything will be okay. So taking little steps towards that is what I do. Nice. Awesome. You had said earlier that like, you're really inspired to support like the youth right now. Right. Uh, yeah. And I'm curious here right now for any, any outliers that, that are like, like they're, I don't know, I, I'm trying to find the right way to, to frame it. Let, let's, they know already in their life that they, that there's something that they have that they want to offer. Right. Uh, and bring, bring, bring to existence. I'm, I'm kind of curious for you, like, what were some of the, the things that helped you re realize like now is the time for me to take action on it now, as opposed to waiting until either I got permission or like whatever else it is. What was something that got you in the game? I love that question. I think, I believe that there's no right time to start and it is now or it's never. And I don't believe in any limitations on um, where you are, uh, what language you speak, how old you are. <clears throat> and I believe everyone has something to offer. And it's all about helping the community, trend ascendance, and having the right heart. And if you have the right heart, then you can start whenever. So, you know, I didn't want to procrastinate it or um, say, you know, I'll do that when I get older. I want to start now and build something great for myself in the world. Nice, nice. Thank you for that. I want to, I, I want to stay, stay on this thing now. Now I'm going to go to start in through transition, and you're like this. I'm, I'm thinking about you. Uh, I know a lot of, um, my, no, I don't know if I know a lot, but I know enough <laughs> professional athletes who are no longer like professional athletes, and uh, a number of times are like it, it's hard for them to get their foot in as to what comes next, you know. Uh, and so I'm really curious if you can speak to like some some of the transitions that you had here, and I, and I'm going to open it up to everyone after this year. So like. You know, feel free to open up your mic and, and such to come speak. But, uh, you know, being someone who's created success in one way uh, and then transitioning yourself and kind of recreating yourself in a new way, how did you go about doing this? And, and how did you do it so that you were able to build upon what you had before as opposed to throwing it all away? Actually, I was using the platform of sport uh, and building myself self along the way already since I was a teenager. I was reading books when I was 11, 12 about the, the magic of self-confidence, mm -hmm. the, the, the abundance is inside of you and other psychology things because I knew that just hitting the white ball on table tennis, it's not going to give me success. So winning takes a lot more. Like you said, it's the 10x, you know, a lot of things. It's 20x that we think we need to do a lot more. And a lot of professional athletes have professional injuries or professional mental health problems. Why? Because they put everything in their own basket. So I I can say I, I was lucky in some way or I was designed that way that I was already, without being aware as much, developing my side hustle or my main hustle, which is now, which I've always been or always had. I remember being five years of age and I had a football team behind uh, on, the, on the backyard with my friends. Um, and I was already being a leader and I knew that I need to do certain things and read certain stuff as a five, six year old. And then as a 14 year old, I was doing yoga and breathing because I knew that, you know, I was adding. So for me, transition was not transition at all. It was just putting away one stuff and heading on with another thing. And I'm just adding to this layers of myself of, of being more and more layered and in other way, more and more close to my core and being the authentic joy. Um, and I also wanted to add something because when you are worried, when you are in fear, when you have only one thing, like Lindsay also asked or, or someone else mentioned, like you want to do that or you don't know what to do, it means that you are limited. And when you're limited, when you're looking from a limited point of view, of course, you're contracted. The, the thing goes that if you want to have intuition, you need to have your abdominal cavity relaxed, especially women. 
because of reproduction. I'm not saying every woman has needs to be a mother, but when a woman has a relaxed abdominal cavity, not six pack, not contraction all the time, I'm not saying they'll go to gym, but too much is too much. Then when you have relaxed abdominal cavity, your diaphragm has more leverage, more range of motion. I think it's 100 years ago, the diaphragm was moving 10 centimeters up and down or even 15. Now it's maybe one or two. So we are completely doomed. Why? Because also women have stepped into another side wanting to be a man in a way, the, the, the male version, and it's not working. Structure of biology, structure of the gender. So in that sense, the more you're relaxed in abdominal cavity, the more there's no problem in that sense of transition here, transition there, because you stop like before Joe mentioned the noise. And why is the music music? Because in between the music notes, you have space. When it's noise, it's just mumble jumble of everything. So you need to allow things to set and then space to another music note. And this is our steps, our actions, our beliefs. Everything is ingrained in that. Well, thank, thanks for that, Yara. Like, I think for me, like, as, as you're saying this, one of the things that gets me is like, I see our like society just continuing to open up in terms of like where like what is available. So being able to keep, I guess I, like I'm thinking about this here, like being able to keep because when you brought up the diaphragm, I was thinking about singing. You know, um, uh, I was a I, I am a singer. I just don't sing as much anymore. Uh, thinking about it from that perspective, and then also just thinking about like what what's going on through my mind is like like gender norms in particular are starting to shift, right? Like, so how does that, how do we continue to to build on that? How do we continue to play on with that there, both from a phys physiological perspective and beyond? So you're getting me thinking about different things here just to, to keep playing. Cause I'm like, I'm like, well, I want to keep expanding the way I want to expand, you know, uh, and, and go up from there. Um, anyone else have anything they want to say when it comes to transition in particular? All right. All right. Looks like we looks like we covered that one there. Well, the good thing the the thing is like here we are. We're at the we're basically at the end of our time here together. So what I want to do is give us each a an opportunity for us to uh, close off here. And uh, and what I'll do is I'll ask each of you to share one insight that you got. And if you didn't get an insight, you can say I didn't get an insight. That's totally fine. Uh, let's share an insight you got, and then also how people can like continue on with you afterwards. They want to go deeper into your world. All right. Um, start with you Daniel then we'll go to Joe and then we'll go to Tyra yeah I think one of the biggest insights that I've ever that I've uh, gathered in my journey is just that you need people in your corner um, we've been talking about alignment personally with our values and you know what excites me and not playing by anyone else's rules or being a people pleaser but then at the same time I've also found on my journey that you need people in your corner. You need people to talk to. You need people to encourage you. You need people to challenge you and sometimes call you on your on your BS if if that's a problem. And so um, I have people that um, that I call every week just to tell them how I'm doing, just to find encouragement, just to find stability. Um, I find that if I'm if I'm off on my own, um, trying to do my own thing, and I'm not communicating with other people. Um, in particular, my wife, if, if we're disconnected, then then I'm an unhealthy person physically, emotionally and spiritually. And so I think just one of the biggest insights is is staying connected with people who really know what's going on and, and people that really um, have your back and are really cheering for you. That's been a huge area of growth for me uh, personally in the last few years. And so that's that's something I, I'm happy to share with everyone listening. Um, I'd love for anyone to uh, listen to the podcast. It's called Live and Learn with Daniel Floyd. Um, you're welcome to email me, uh, floydtheteats at gmail.com. Um, I'm on Instagram and, and, and X and all of that. I'm not really active on those. So just, just send me an email. And I, I love to talk, love to talk about family, love to talk about education um, and the things that really matter in life. So thanks again for having me. And thank you for being here. Um, Joe, how about you? Um, I, I'm going to have to agree completely with Daniel. Uh, I'm I'm an introvert and a loner. And so one of the biggest problems I had was opening up to people and connecting with people, which caused me a lot of problems. And uh, so I've sort of, you know, made an effort, conscious effort to create a mastermind group around me. Uh, I have some friends now from all over the world who 
who I actively talk to on a regular basis, you know, and it's just sharing, like, like Danny was saying, that's the biggest thing, like just by talking about something, it gives you insights, it gives you clarity, you know, and if you don't share, you're just bottling it up and it, you, it, it's going to explode into a volcano. So yeah. And to connect with me, I, I'm on Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube, all those kind of places. Um, yeah, just, and if you want to be on my podcast, I'd love to have you on my podcast. Uh, I've got two podcasts. Well, I've got one and then I'm bringing another one. One's called biohacking life hacks is about, you know, how did you optimize your life? How did you optimize the way you think or do whatever it is? And the other one's breakthroughs, uh, which is about how, what were your breakthroughs? How did you go through those breakthroughs? What, what enable those breakthroughs? Cause you know, everybody goes through breakthroughs you know and it's it's good to see what other people's are so yeah that's, that's, that's me thank you thank you we'll go to jira then yura did you want to know my insights personally or you want to know my insights what i gained from everyone on the call today your insights personally so any, anything anything that like you got whatever you got from today's conversation if you got anything from it yeah, so I got a lot from today's conversation. I know the main thing that stood out to me was that you are important as the person. <laughs> like we want to do all of these different things. And of course, we have to work to live and we have to, you know, be there for our loved ones and support one another. But we are the most important thing. We have to be mindful of our mental health, of our physical health, how we are treating ourselves and our bodies. I feel like everyone on the call talked about that in so many different ways, even having backstories of how burnout can affect, you know, your health overall. So for me, I think that is very important. I always preach that I am my, my first person, my first choice. I don't have kids yet. And sometimes my friends and family look at me like, well, wait till you have kids. But I stick by it because if I'm not okay, how can I be okay to take care of my kids <laughs> or help anyone else out? So I'll see if that changes when I have kids. But I just, I got that from today is being your best self inside out to be able to do the things you need to do and be successful in the world and be here for the people that you care for most. So oh, that was the biggest thing I got from everybody today. Nice. And, and how can we stay in your world? You can stay in my world. So I'm on social media platforms at I am Jaira B and that's J-A-I-R-A-B. And my website is also www.jairab.com. I will be relaunching my podcast, A Dose of Strength, soon. So you can go to my website and check all of that out. All right. Thank you so much. Yura and then Lindsay will bring us home. Yeah, I've, uh, I'm very grateful, Niyama, that you've created this space uh, of collaborating, connecting, because it's important. We are more in the world of unity, of understanding that we are not against each other. We are fighting only our own shadows and demons. So it's important to connect. And I loved uh, what Joe said about meeting strangers. Anyway, I'm very outgoing or outspoken, so I don't have an issue with that. But um, yeah, I need to go more out. So I will do that as well. Maybe not 50 tomorrow all of a sudden, but uh, I'll go step by step. Um, and everyone else, yeah, knowing you, getting to know you, I've written down your names. I'm going to follow you, connect uh, outside of this as well. And to all the outliers uh, to understand that life is about expansion. It's not about contraction. We need to focus not only on the gym and how we achieve stuff, but how if you contract something, the other side needs to expand and prolong. So we achieve more bit relaxation with fun with this comedy with opening the heart and i've been nodding all the time it means i'm coherent with everything you're saying uh with with all the levels that you're bringing in so this is how i feel connected and and uh, everyone can find me on the most easy way the genuine i have their contact you can contact me texts directly to my whatsapp you can find my social media there the instagram tiktok the being the genuine athlete podcast on youtube or, or spotify or whatever so yeah thanks thank you and Lindsay. yeah um thanks for having me i love hearing about everyone's stories i feel very inspired to get back to work um finding balance um like daniel said about finding your people um how joe said you should come out of your comfort zone and just prioritizing yourself um 
I think what I got out of it is that it's never too late to start and there's it's always good to see that there are other people out there um, that I can look up to and you know stay motivated um, and like Dyra said just prioritizing your health so you guys all seem like you have really great healthy head spaces and I love to see that I hope you guys all have really good success um, on your podcast your businesses um, anything else your families <clears throat> You can reach me at, on Instagram at Lindsay Lee. My nonprofit website, if you want to check it out, is Beyond Partners with another S dot org. And my email is Lindsay. Uh, actually, no, it's Lee Lindsay dot edu at gmail.com. Thank you for having me. Thank you all. Thank you all for taking the time here. Thank you for, for trusting me. Thank you for playing this game with me here. And thank you for leading in each of your own world, worlds. I couldn't have found you if you weren't uh, already a leader. So uh, please keep expanding that and keep bringing up what you bring out into the world to higher and higher levels. So I, I appreciate you each. Be well. <laughs>